Hi, good morning. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, so uh, this is our last lamb. So very happy to be here this morning. Good morning, everybody. How everybody's doing? Okay. Seems like a uh, pretty fast. Everybody's showing on, uh, showing on here. Wonderful to see you. Many familiar faces. Hi, Olivia. Tony. <laughs> okay, so uh, this morning I wanted to start first with the uh, meditation. Um, so I will guide a short meditation. Uh, meditation will be more uh, based on this particular lamp, the uh, fourth lamp. Uh, so I will guide this meditation more uh, toward the meaning, the essence of the fourth, fourth lamp. Uh, so the fourth lamp is the, the empty nature of the base. So uh, basically uh, what this means is the, the awareness of the ultimate truth, the awareness of the boundless uh, space, the awareness of the single truth, the awareness of oneness, the awareness of sense of humanness. So basically, uh, t today's lamp is a lamp which is free from bias, divisions, separations, disconnectedness. It's the, the ultimate awareness of, uh, it's like a, the oneness, uh, the single truth. Uh, no separation between you and me, uh, humanness. So this just sense, sense of being free from all kind of divisions, bias. Uh, according to this teaching, that's what it's saying. This lamp of innate awareness clears the darkness of all the bias separation. So that's the practice that what we are going to do this morning. And I will talk, of course, I will talk about what all these different bias means and how they really uh, globally affect us, socially it affect us, in the family-wise that affect us, community-wise how that bias affect us, different religious traditions bias how that affects us, within division, within our own body, with our breath and our consciousness, when they are div divided, disconnected, how that affects us. So the bias affects so many different areas, and I want to talk a little bit about that later. So first, uh, I want everybody to sit comfortably. Bring your full attention to this moment. Now and here. Let go of old past. Let go of the future. Bring your clear and open attention to your breath. Breathe deep. Deep, much longer than usually you breathe. Every time you exhale your breath, let go of all efforts, efforts at your work, efforts 
around you in your life, efforts that you feel in your relationship, efforts that you feel in your body this moment, efforts that you feel in your breath this moment, efforts that you feel in your mind this moment, and just be aware of all the efforts and breathe it out deep as you exhale and rest in this effortless, spontaneous state. And bring your palm attention to your heart. Just simply touch as touch of your palm to your heart chakra. Feel that contact, physical connection. Bring your awareness in that physical connection. Let your heart breathe deep. Let your heart release all holdings, efforts, tensions. Particularly, just be aware that every conflict that you're experiencing, every struggle that you're experiencing, every pain that you're experiencing, every conflict with anybody, close ones that you're experiencing, they all have something to do with separation, disconnectedness. Me versus you. Us versus them. My religion versus their religion. My country versus their country. white versus black. It's always comparison, separation. But in particularly, be aware of your own pain and challenge. It also has something to do with being biased. Not able to integrate, able to connect, not able to be one with something or somebody causing you these pains. So recognize that first. Give time. This is a gift that we all are giving ourselves this morning to connect with each other, to connect with ourselves, to open reflection in our biasness and understanding clarity, these bias causing more conflict and pain in the world, society, in family, in relationship, in within your own life this moment. Recognize and breathe it out all this effort. Breathe deep. And we are all here to support each other to do that. And I, as I play the Sale Will Mantra, those you wanted to sing together, welcome. Those you wanted to remain silent, welcome. But be aware that we all are supporting each other. Send your blessing and support to others. Be open to receive blessings and support from others. Clear these bias, separation, divisions, struggle, effort, every exhalation. Breathe in the support, connection, clarity, awakening, qualities, love, compassion. 
and through that connect and try to be one and this feel the sense of energy of oneness boundless awareness arising within you giving birth to so many different beautiful qualities in you and radiating lights through those quality in your life and others life just feel that continue
Continue, rest in the space in your heart, the openness in your heart. Feel the boundless space, boundless openness, unbiased connection. Feel all the people that you feel connection with, that you care, you love, and go beyond that, that people you don't know. Like right this moment, we are all here in this cyberspace, boundless sacred cyberspace in which we are all connected this moment through this life facebook life We send these vibrations, light, through this boundless, from this boundless sacred space in our heart to all of each other, regardless of we know each other. Feel that connection, connectedness. The awareness of this connection, the awareness of this undivided awareness, connected awareness, unbiased awareness, the awareness of singleness, awareness of humanness, the awareness of oneness. This awareness it's the light, it's the lamp. It's what the fourth lamp is about. So continuously feel this connection as we uh, continuously, as I begin to teach here a little bit this morning, talk a little bit, uh, continue that sense of connection so how was the meditation? Just few simple questions about this, this morning's meditation. The question number one is, do you recognize the disconnectedness, separation, duality, bias, creating or created the circumstances, situations, challenges, disconnections, pain, all that you're experiencing, can you see its direct relation to this separation, division, and the bias, ignorance? Can you see that? So that's question number one. Since the internet allow us, everybody can comment at the same time. So I love to hear all of your comment. And uh, I will try to look through them as much as possible. You're also letting other people know 
that we help we are helping each other so that's the question number one I want to hear from everybody question number two can you clear that by bringing your attention to this moment bringing your attention to your body bringing your awareness into your heart bringing your awareness to your breath and clearing those efforts from your body from your heart and discovering more open space unbiased sacred space in your heart that's my question number two again i would like to hear from all of you Question number three, as you clear your heart space, as you breathe from your heart, as heart feels more space, more breath, more oxygen, heart gives a food, heart feeds your brain through your central channel, or maybe even some sense of your central nervous system, it feeds through through the central nervous system to your heart, to your brain. Creates more space in your heart, more space in your head. There's more connection between your heart and the brain, your heart and the head. Can you feel that more space toward that boundless space, toward that unbiased space and awareness. As a result of that, this awareness, as the power of this awareness, can you feel more confidence with the changes around you, within you? Can you feel more confidence, less threat by circumstances and others? Can you feel more trust ability to connect more with others. And the last, number four, can you feel more qualities such as love, compassion, from that confidence, from that space? So, I hope that you feel a little bit, witnessing a little bit what I'm talking here. But those you feel not very clear what I'm speaking, not felt not very clear the, the experiences of meditation, fortunately we, have, we are recording it, this, this teaching, meditation, you can visit back and then repeat again the meditation part only, and then give me feedback saying, after you listening a couple of times, what happened. So I strongly recommend that to everybody. Now, this is the last, last part of the four lamps, and I know maybe some of you are completely new. I will very quickly review the, the part four lamp, so which is also all of them are recorded. And um, and they are also, uh, we are making them available and translating into 17 languages. So, uh, so those you need in other languages, so you can always write a comment here and then somebody might able to help you which language you are seeking what and they can guide you. Our our Sangha Cyber and people who are responsible can guide you, help you. And of course, if anybody else is willing to help, we are missing some languages and you feel like you are, you have opportunity to help us doing what, doing something, we always welcome those uh, help. We need more help to help more people. So the four lamp, what is four lamp? Four lamp is the physical eye, 
That's lamp number one. The clear vision of sound, light, and rays. That is lamp two. The, the wisdom awareness, that is lamp four. And the last lamp, the empty nature of the base, that is lamp four. So these lamps are basically it means awareness. Another way, another way to say that will be light, which illumine, which clears the darkness, illuminates the situation, or means the same thing like awareness. Awareness clears the ignorance, clears the doubt, illuminates the circumstances, situations in our life. So they are, in a way, they are nothing more than uh, these lamps are awareness and light. That is what really lamps means. So each of these four lamps or four lights or four awareness, they have a role of clearing specific situation, darkness, obscuration. So for example, the physical eye, the lamp of the eye, basically lamp of the eye, clears the worldly darkness. Now I know that most of us, we're lucky that we can see, we can see sights, we have able to see, I'm I'm looking at the, my screen, and you're looking me through the, your, your screen. We're able to see, but then uh, sometime not everybody is able to see. So, so the eye, the retina, eye consciousness, allow us to see the light in the world. Big percentage of all, all the informations that we collect and process, we do through these eyes. So we are, we don't, we take for granted, but I think it's important to understand this is very special thing that what we have here, the door, the door of the light, the door of the soul. And particularly like this teaching, Dzogchen teaching, and particularly Dzogchen teaching from Shangji Nianju, in these teaching, they did talk about that I being the door of the soul, door of the truth, door of the light, that you can actually able to see who you are clearly and who you can able to experience clearly who you are through this door of the eye. Second, clear vision of sound and light. Second lamp is the awareness of your experiences. Most of what we see through our, perceive through our senses, everything we perceive through our senses, these experiences becomes our exit door from us, from the truth from collective purpose because our lack of being aware fully of these appearances. In teaching, they talk about appearances, dynamic energy of sound, light, and race. We say, but in essence, what this means is that it means you, all your perception, perceptional experiences, they just become exit. They become our, they, they destroyer in some sense, disconnector, pain producer. But the one who's have some sense of inner wisdom, these appearances, these perceptions, these experiences of ours becomes a doorway to that light. So awakening of our perception, awakening in our perception, awakening through our perceptions, experiences. 
So when we are awakened through our experiences, we overcome the darkness of duality. That means we are not conditioned by our experiences. We are free from our experiences. Our experiences becomes a door for our growth and liberation. And they become like a door for our inner light. So it's not that we have to run away from our experiences. We embody, we embrace, they become door. Therefore, they, you, you, don't, you don't have a nihilist approach to them, but they, you, they help us. So that is the second light and second lamp. The third one, it has something to do with the more closer to our self, the wisdom awareness, so awareness of self or self-awareness. In the teaching, it says the, the wisdom awareness clears the darkness of ignorance. And that the, what it means is the darkness of the ignorance means ignorance is nothing more than lack of knowing oneself. That is the ultimate sense of ignorance. Of course, ignorance can be related to uh, objects, perceptions, appearances. Like when you don't understand the truth of reality, objects, then of course it's the ignorance of objects. But when you don't understand who you are as a subject, don't have self-realization, then they, that, that lack of self-realization is called ignorance. Doubt of oneself. So both are, both fits in this definition of ignorance, but I think as a personal development, people, people who are on the path, we are not like just objectively trying to uh, um, elaborate our conceptual mind, logical mind, rational mind, in the name of intellectual learning. We are trying to be more um, down to earth, focus on our experiences, focus on our own inner experiences, and trying to understand this notion of ignorance within us, rather than trying to figure out that on, on the pillar and the vase and the objects and external analytical approach. Of course, there's a beauty in everything, in every learning, but it's a matter of time that where you wanted to spend more time and discover what faster so that you have more time to engage in, in deeper reflection and meaningful experiences. That's something evolve faster your own realization. So that is the third lamp. So the last lamp, which is what we are going to speak today. Sorry, I'm running out of time, but I'm, I think I'm going to take my time this morning. Maybe uh, it might be a little late. I have, uh, I'm quite free, so it will be fine. I don't have a deadline here and that that's the nice thing about as long as I can continue and anybody can leave anytime, anybody can comment anytime, anybody can, uh, you know, do you know do anything. So this is the beauty of the cyberspace, which is we are free of um, doing whatever we wanted to do. The last one is the so in the Tibetan we say. So the empty nature of base removes the darkness of bias. So being biased, being racist, being nationalist, being um, fundamentalist. So whatever ism, whatever things which makes us separate from each other. 
that though all those things is what very very important things to address this very moment here uh, because something uh, you can look look at you know like old time there are kingdoms there are villages there's a little monasteries everywhere there's a little tribes and uh, leaders in different places then they, these kingdoms are gone now different countries different nations now then more like in a bigger sense of like a uh, social networks now a bigger sense of united nations so you can see in a, some sense of these divisions are becoming a less and less and less there is a collective um, connection and awareness becoming a more and more and more so this is i think what is very very important with this notion of uh, removes the darkness of bias the bias is darkness racism is darkness darkness so basically we all know and i in some some sense we all also know that you know there are so many beautiful non-profit organizations around the world there is so many wisdom teachings and traditions around the world and there is also so many beautiful non-dual teachings around the world which clearly emphasize um, emphasizes uh, this sense of single awareness oneness unbiased single truth but sometimes unfortunately these traditions becomes too much focus on their own religious tradition their own religion their own schools their own sub schools and particularly their own teachers and monasteries and churches and so on it's very sad it get, get smaller 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 in the name of getting trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger and wider and wider so so and this this notion of empty nature of the base i know like in the, literally when in tibetan we say kunji ingji doma and and when we are talking about the empty nature of the base uh, it's probably it's harder to understand all the concept but i'm try, i'll try to explain as simple as i can at least as simple as i can or as simple as i understand personally myself what, what this means first of all i rephrase that idea of lamp light awareness they all mean same like a uh, in outer in the universe imagine if the sun is not there if they imagine the universe is totally dark or imagine that you know like the in in a tibet we talk about the butter lamp candle nowadays we have light uh, the electricity and so in some sense imagine if there is no electricity imagine the darkness your darkness will pervade more imagine our own inner wisdom it's not there the sense of discovering knowing knowledge awareness if wisdom is not there then the darkness of ignorance will be there darkness of in your house hold will be there if there is no electricity darkness in uh, on the, in the globe they will be there if the sun is not there so the metaphor of lamp light is as as like a light so the simp- same way as like same way like darkness is to represent the same way true now of course this has something to do with more like a uh, coming down from very collective the light and awareness meaning of the light and awareness in a very collective sense to then to then toward very individual sense uh, i would like to talk this about a little bit more i think kind of interesting 
For example, we can talk about uh, awareness of universal truth. We can, universal truth, I'm talking a little bit more in a sense of ultimate truth. I'm not talking about in a sense of a collect, conventional collective truth. For example, maybe as simple as that, you know, like a, a global issues, for example. The global issues are not issues of one race, one gender, one uh, religion, one country. Today's world, globally, we are affecting each other. No matter how much walls you create, no matter how much boundaries that you create nation nationwide, the disease travels, the pollution travels, and the global warming is like a collective issue, so it's not a one country's issue. So there are glo global issues, the global challenges, United Nations um, address about these six or seven global issues that, that all everybody together that one need to think, it's not about one single countries or one single races or one single religious traditions issue is all globally all human beings have to be aware in order to overcome these problems. So you can see in a sense of what global truth could mean, the global collective purpose is, global collective needs are, that there is some sense very clearly it's for all of us equally important to be aware, not divide ourselves because of countries, nation, economic status, religion, sex, genders, and none of these should be a reason to divide us. So you can see in some sense of teaching, just trying to address those things, but in a more very esoteric way, sometimes that not necessarily connect a more secular level. And His Holiness Dalai Lama, as we all know, he addresses number many of times their secular issues, uh, secular ethics, secular ethics. So same principles. So, so basically, I think the second thing will be to talk about a little bit awareness of, if you bring that sense of truth to more like a closer awareness of boundless space within and without. So this could be a little bit more, again, esoteric language, I, I guess. But at least I think it's, it's uh, maybe many people who are watching this Facebook Live has some clue what I mean by that. The awareness of boundless space within ourselves and outside ourselves. Like during this morning's meditation, what we're trying to be aware is starting from individual pain, individual conflict, Recognizing this individual pain and conflict has something to do with someone else. Your situation has something to do with some other situations. And therefore, you are need, you need to be aware of more like a collective sense of awareness. So some sense, and that has something to do with the self-identity, pain identity, isolation, separation, division, disconnectedness from others. That is what is causing your pain. In two relationship, simple as that. Your relationship to your husband, your wife, your partner, your family. More you feel closer to them, more you feel one with them, the less problem you're going to have with them. The more you separate from yourself, from them, from her, from him, more you're trying to be, protect yourself, defend yourself from them, from her or him, you're going to have more problems. So your separation from her and him and them, it becomes your source of your pain. Your openness, your connectedness, your sharing, becomes your source of strength and happiness individually and collectively. We know that during meditation in the morning, we all felt that. How does this come from? This come from this 
like boundless space, the awareness of boundless space, awareness of this openness in our heart. The same thing, even even a one single body, even one single body, let's talk about that for, for a moment. Awareness of your body. When body, when the mind disconnects with your body, when the body is not being cared, not be not not presence of your mind, disconnected, body more chances body to get um, um, get flu, get sick, get weak, not digest properly, not. Uh, weaker, weakening your immune system. When body and mind is connected together, your body f processes all this uh, threat from outside better. So even your body and uh, your heart and your 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 brain. I just share uh, uh, one of the students put this beautiful uh, image of the heart and the brain like a holding hand with each other. Same thing. In your own body, your heart communicates with your brain. Your brain supports your heart. Their connect, your connection between your heart and brain is probably the most important factor of our human health, our individual health. Not separating them. There is a whole department for neuroscience for brain and there is a whole department of cardio, cardio department and there are, these departments are completely different. It's not like that. They are connected together. We have to understand their connectedness together. The, all this, when the, our heart is open, we are, when we feel openness, the energy openness, how much electric magnetic magnetic fields it produces, so much. When we feel some sense of warmth and love, so much energy is produced in the heart, and these energies is like a food for our brain. So their connectedness is also our like our well-being. So what I'm trying to say here is I'm talking about this disconnectedness, separation, uh, out result of bias. Bias is is an outcome of lack of awareness, the one awareness of oneness. Awareness of oneness or awareness of empty nature of the base, so called here. So now, if you look as a, even in a, in, a, in, a, in a society today, as, a, as awareness of humanness, let's think about for a moment. We are all human. Of course, we can say we can connect with all the sentient beings, including all the animals and everything. But let's talk just for, for a moment as a humanness. We are all human, regardless of age, regardless of uh, background, regardless of uh, social uh, economic status, uh, regardless of your sexes, regardless of your race. Regardless of your belief, regardless of your color, all we all as human being, one simple word, we are all human being. There is a humanness in us. There is a basic human goodness, a goodness of being human. That goodness is within us, all of them. So in some sense, that they, nobody is evil, nobody is bad. No, nobody is bad, nobody is evil. There is no such thing called even pers evil person. If there is, a, they, there might be experiences of evil person. That experiences of any individual evil person that is collectively created, collective psyche creates that collective evil. But that collective evil, even that collective evil, is not shared by every sentient being. It's only collect selected group of people shared that evil because that selected group of people collectively, psychically created that evil person. But there's nothing such thing called evil person. 
So let's for a moment think about, forget about this sense of separation as a human. We are all one. I would encourage everybody today, today when you go out and look anybody, look it out everybody, not through their color, gender, age, education, their look, their dress. Just look through their eye, the humanness in them, the goodness in them, the being in them, the Christ in them, the Buddha within them. You will only be able to see that if you have that moment some sense of that connection to your own awareness, that, that unbiased space within you, that empty nature of the base within you. I know this, the word, literal translation, empty, empty nature of the base, but what I'm saying here is the, the boundless sacred space, awareness of the boundless sacred space within you, in you. The awareness of who truly you are, if you have that moment of that awareness, then you will be able to see who the other person is that moment. You don't have to look that person through their look, through their colors, genders. So ability to see somebody who they are from that place of who you are is that today is your homework. Maybe you can do the guided meditation I did in this morning. Just do that. Maybe informally inside yourself, few seconds, few minutes. And before you look at somebody and trying to connect with somebody, you will see. You will see. I hope you find your new wife. I hope you find your new friend, new father, new mother, new sister knew everybody, but you know these people for a long time, but maybe you're able to see a new being. In in old person, you're able to see something new being when you discover something new, sense of who you are, that sense of freshness. Let's, just one more thing, last thing, is this notion of a single truth, awareness of a single truth. In uh, Dzogchen teaching, we say sometimes Tigle Nyakchik. Tigle Nyakchik means single sphere of light. Uh, single awareness. A single taste or oneness. So that you think, if you look at that, all the problem in the world today, a religious problem, religion, and particularly the religious tradition who claim to have something non-dual, something uh, beyond separation, uh, something uh, knowledge of enlightenment, liberation, but every religious tradition run into a problem. Run into a problem of what? Bias. Unfortunately, I don't know anybody on this earth that who is not biased. Religiously speaking, bias. I don't know any individual that who is not biased. I don't know. Maybe I have a impure heart and impure eyes, impure mind to see that, probably, very, very much possible, but I personally I have not experienced yet. But it's a mere question of degrees, acceptable degrees and non-acceptable degrees of bias, religious bias. And why this religious bias, why these wars, why these separations, why these conflicts, why religious leaders creating a social conflicts? Because 
they all come from one single thing called bias. Divisions. Separations. And that comes out because simply a lack of able to see oneness or lack of able to see truly the oneness, not intellectually. Having that principle in the heart, taking into the heart as a, a way of life, a, a means of practice, a path of liberation. Not as a convenience matter of, as a part of a topic or a lecture or, or, or conversation, intellectual conversation or, or doctrine and discussions and debate. Anybody can do that. That's anybody, it's nothing special about it. Or nothing that special about it. So you see, the conflict in the world, all religious conflict comes out of bias. And the bias comes out, the notion of one single truth, not able to understand that the truths are different. And many of these different, different truths or different um, so-called different doctrine systems having different truth. Uh, different doctrines are divided. The hierarchy has to base on their view of uh, the truth. But these all views are defined by intellectual mind, theoretical mind, conceptual mind. Not these are created by awakened mind. Awakened mind does not create conflict. So I think um, uh, we are past more than an hour. This is the longest uh, Facebook Live I have ever done, probably. So I think I'm going to uh, close here. Um, so I hope all of you enjoy this morning's meditation and uh, and the talk and i hope um, this morning's our encounter our meeting uh, i hope better bring some better perspective of life at least good uh, hope a good day for today you have a good day and uh, home remember homework homework to whenever you go out today, whenever you go out today, please listen to me carefully here to right now. This is your homework. Whenever you go out today, be aware of your judgmental mind, the mind which immediately judges somebody based on their age, color, sexes, um, look, um, just Watch, just being aware of your judgmental mind, number one. That's your first task. Number two is trying to breathe it out with your awareness, recognize, clear it with your awareness. Remember, we talk about on the third, your experiences are doorway to that light. So that means your experience of judging somebody when you recognize, it becomes a doorway to your inner light. And inner light will illuminate to see somebody who they are. Allow you to see who you are and allow, it will allow you to see somebody who they are and have a great time seeing yourself and seeing other people today and next, next for a whole week until we see you next time. Next, just the announcement, April 25th. 1 p.m. New York time. Uh, we will be uh, our uh, very exciting. We have a very special guest, David Presti, who is professor at the University of Berkeley here, neuroscientist. And so uh, the the topic is 
the four lamps through the eyes of neuroscientists or through the neuroscience, eyes of neuroscience. So um, I am very much looking forward. I'm always curious to learn more, understand more from, from science. And uh, so uh, I'm very much looking, David, we meet very often together, have cup of tea and discuss about these things. And I want, I'm very ha happy to bring him on Facebook Live to share with all of you. So uh, David, knowledge will definitely, you know, uh, enlighten all of us. So uh, please uh, join us next week, April 25th, 1 p.m. New York time. And uh, thank you so much, everybody who liking liking the page and the and particularly thank you very much that you uh, trusting um, me and the, my page and uh, sharing with your uh, other friends who who might benefit that you know, opening your yourself uh, to other people with that trust and even though there is a lot of uh, uh, Facebook discussions I think let's uh, say beyond stay beyond that and utilize the best this mean of our connection communication through this Facebook, we, we stay uh, connected with uh, going beyond. So thank you so much. Take care. Bye.